Hey guys, Adam Garcia here with Shortstop Studios, and I'm excited because today we are doing an exclusive hands-on review of the C-Box system. If you haven't heard about this nifty little device, it's a great device for saving some money on CFast systems such as the Ursa or Ursa Mini. What this brilliant little gadget does is it allows you to plug these CFast card adapters into your CFast camera systems, which then send the information into a two-bay solid-state drive enclosure. And now you can use your professional line solid state drives with this system and record truly uncompressed footage to solid state drives over CFast media, which gives you great transfer rates as well as a better price on your storage. For me, although I try to get the most professional look I can on set, I am working at a budget. And what this product allows me to do is save hundreds if not thousands on storage, as well as getting the amazingly fast transfer speeds of solid state drives. Another great thing about this product is it's extremely light and with the the lightweight of the solid states and the lightweight of the box, you're not going to even notice the additional weight on your camera. So I was so excited about what the system had to offer, I had to fly to Indianapolis to meet up with Clifton Stommel, the creator of the device, just to do some benchmark testing and onset testing to see if this thing could deliver what us as filmmakers need to save some money on our wallet, as well as get the high performing and high transfer rates of solid state drives. So let's jet over to Indianapolis and meet with Clifton Stommel, the creator of the C-Box system, and see what this thing can do. I'm here with Clifton Stommel. Hey guys. The creator and designer of the C-Box system. Uh, behind us here we have the Ursa and C-Box system set up and ready to go for testing. So today we're actually going to put it through some strenuous testing, trying different frame rates, resolutions, and other aspects of filming. So uh, let's go take a look. All right. So to show what the C-Box system can do, we wanted to run it through various frame rate and resolution tests to make sure that it is capable of handling those high speed rates of transfer that it needs in order to not cause any drop frames. The first benchmark test that we did was a 60 frames per second 4K uncompressed resolution recording until both SSDs timed out. Sensor frame rate matches, right? And we're going to say dual card mode on because that is what this camera is designed to shoot on CFast cards. We're going to record. This is your camera writing the information to the card. This is how much has been used. This is how much space you've got left. We can see here we still have just over an hour of time left shooting at 4K 60p, totally uncompressed. As long as this record says record here, we're good. We're not dropping frames. So an interesting tidbit for you guys if you haven't shot with the Blackmagic Ursa yourselves is that any frame rate over 30 frames per second, it's sending out such a high amount of data that it has to send alternating frames to your CFast cards, or in our case, the SSDs. The way it works is by sending the first frame to your first CFast card and your second frame to your second CFast card and alternating between the two on the frames so that way it can split all that data between the two CFast cards or once again, in our case, the SSDs. We are currently at 24 minutes of continuous recording with no dropped frames or buffering issues. So I just wanted to give you guys an update on how the testing process is going. Just to give you guys a look, we actually haven't had any issues with buffering or dropped frames that the only thing that has changed in this moment is because we're coming down to the last 44 seconds of the card, we are now receiving a card full message, just letting us know we're within the last 5% of the memory card. Uh, we have about 38 more seconds before the card times out, so we'll even do a little countdown for you guys. All right guys, so we're in our last 15 seconds. Clifton has joined me to do the official countdown. We've now been recording for just over 60 minutes uh, of continuous recording at 4K raw at 60 frames per second. Four, three, two, one. And there you have it. Card full all the way to the brim. Not a single moment did that give us a buffer warning issue. Uh, no little exclamation point in triangle. All that happened there was near the end, it went ahead and let us know, hey, your card is nearly full. And there you have it. 
card full all the way through. No warnings, 60 frames a second. Pure uncompressed raw, 4K, two one terabyte SSDs, no problem. All right guys, so we just finished doing our 60 frames per second 4K benchmark tests and we're bringing the terabyte SSDs into the post room to take a look and make sure that there is no drop frames through checking the frame count. Okay, so basically we've got uh, the two folders. All of the even number frames are dropped into one folder. All of the odd number frames are dropped into another folder. Uh, our total frame numbering system, which is numbered in real time by the camera, matches exactly with the number of files that we have produced here added together between the two folders. So we have a perfect match between the file structure, the way they're named, and the actual number of files the computer is recognizing are in the folders. So we have a perfect capture, no drop frames between the two folders. All you would do now in your post-production process would be to take these two folders and merge them on your machine, and you'd have all the even and odd frames in perfect succession, ready to play and you know record back and do whatever in slow-mo that you're gonna do in post. The second benchmark test that we ran was at 80 frames per second, 3 to 1 compression, 4K resolution recording. If you haven't shot with the Ursa before, it's incapable of shooting uncompressed 80 frames per second, so it has a 3 to 1 compression option, so that way you can push for the higher frame rates. However, because of the high transfer rates of the SSDs, we wanted to push it by putting 80 frames per second 3 to 1 compression on a single SSD while also juicing the ISO as high as possible so we make sure it is the highest transfer rate of data possible at that compression. After some research, it seems that you're getting more megabytes out of the camera at your 60 frames per second uncompressed raw versus your compression at the 80 frames per second, but we wanted to do both tests for you guys at home. And there's an airplane going by. All right, guys, even though there's an airplane going by, we're doing the last four second countdown. Three, two, one. And there it is, guys. So as you can see, we have successfully recorded one hour, one minute and 57 seconds and 17 frames of 80 frames per second 4K recording at a three to one compression, which is the only recording you can do at 80 frames per second on the Ursa. Um, I mean, this is stress testing at its finest. We've stressed it on a single SSD, which, you know, it really pushes it. And we even went a step further with crunching or punching the ISO to make sure that we are pushing the highest data rate possible and that we are really stressing this SSD. So, I mean, you know, these stress tests are really showing you what the C-Box system can do. And, you know, when you have the power of an SSD at your fingertips with such powerful cameras, I mean, in the test stress tests alone, I'm blown away and I feel that this is a very powerful product and system that Clifton has created and I'm super stoked because it's going to save me hundreds on storage for my Ursa Mini. So you know it's a great product so far. The only thing we have left to do is tomorrow we're going to put it into a real world situation and we're actually going to film a short and so then that way I can put the Z-Box system in a more on the set situation and see how it performs. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Stick around and we'll show you that now. Okay, so the first basic power option is a D-Type to USB adapter, which lets you pull the power directly off of the camera, and then the USB to DC jack goes into the, into the, uh, the C-Box system. That allows you to keep the whole rig mobile, and it's super easy to use. Uh, the second power solution, keeping our USB, uh, but removing the D-Type, is to use a either a cell phone charging mobile power block, which powers it just fine as long as you have two amps or more, on your mobile battery or to plug directly into the 5 volt USB port in your V-Lock battery plate depending on what battery plate you have. The final USB option is to literally plug it into the wall charger for a tablet or like a large phone. Again 5 volts 2 amps you can even plug it into a wall charger and it will fine. It'll, it'll run just fine. You can simply plug the DC to DC cable from the C-Box directly into your V-Lock or gold mount battery plate, as long as there's a 5-volt output port. It's as simple as that. Sweet. 
Uh, the reason I went with the 5 volt option rather than a 12 or higher volt availability option is because uh, I would hate to deprive people of the ability to plug the C-Box into any array of cell phone powering accessories, batteries, power plugs, you name it. 5 volts is super available, everyone's got them for their cell phones. You can apply that to the C-Box. CFast cards are an emerging new media and a great storage option for professional cameras because they offer a portable solution and a high transfer rate. Unfortunately, because it's such a new media option for cameras, it is relatively pricey. Researching some of the tech specs and transfer speeds of the CFast systems, I see that they transfer at about 350 megabytes per second, whereas the professional line solid state drives are transferring at about 550 megabytes per second. Which means that through this system, you can actually get higher transfer rates than you can with the CFast cards and at a better price point. The question you might be asking though is are you receiving a bottleneck through the cable on the C-Box system and therefore losing some of those 550 megabytes per second? And the answer is no. You are receiving truly uncompressed footage and are not receiving a bottleneck through these cables. You're actually receiving the bottleneck from the solid state drives themselves and as they begin to get better transfer rates you'll even get better transfer rates out of your C-Box system in the future which is semi future proofing the system and keeping it up to date for the next few you know, technical years. So just to give you a little idea of how much money you can be saving, I'm going to break down what I plan to do with my C-Box system. Originally when I was looking at purchasing the Ursa Mini, I saw that 256 gigabyte cards were running anywhere from about 500 to 650 a piece. Wanting to utilize all the frame rates out of the Ursa Mini, I knew that I had to have a minimum of two CFast cards for the alternating writing of the frames. So that means for 512 gigabytes of CFast storage, I was going to be paying $1,000 to $1,200 just in storage. Being able to lock in my early bird special at $325, I was able to do some research and see that the Samsung 850 Professional Solid State Drive roughly runs just under $500 for a terabyte. That means that for under $1,000, I'm getting a terabyte of storage and I have money left over to now get a 240 or 512 gig SSD, so I have a second SSD for those alternating writing frames. That means I'm saving roughly $200 as well as getting double if not triple the storage that I could get with the CFast cards. Now although the CFast cards are more portable and they're a great solution and they are the future of media, I just don't have that kind of money right now to be spending alone on storage, not even including the V-mount batteries or the shoulder or hand grip that the Ursa Mini offers. So I was super stoked when I heard about the C-Box system and I knew how to jump on it right away and if you're lucky and if you're quick, you can hop on the early bird specials as well. So as you can see, this is an amazing little device at an amazing price. I mean, I'm really excited with this year. We're seeing great cameras, great devices come out. I feel that filmmakers are really pushing what they can do, as well as saving on our wallet, and it's making more affordable for filmmakers like you and I to go shoot some shit. So I hope this review covered some of the questions you had about the C-Box system, and I hope you pre-order yours now so you can have it when your Ursa Mini comes out. I'm really excited about this device. Uh, unfortunately, I have to send this model back to Clifton until the devices come out and I can get a hold of my own, but I'm excited for that day, and uh, you know me, I'm definitely gonna go shoot some